checked the gas uh, in the car and uh, he he uh, he just uh, gave up from this trial and uh, decided to kill himself and he uh, he do that with a gun <sighs> or he did that yeah mm -hmm. and what was the reaction of the boys uh, the little the little boy uh, was very very scared and uh, he he ran uh, so fast without talking. I I think. Very good, very good. Uh, Santa, um, I don't I, I I haven't heard your voice at all. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be cutting you out. I'm not firing you. Uh, I do apologize. <laughs> um, great job. Uh, let me so let me fix up what Marwa said. Um, uh, oh, so I'm sorry, Santa. I need to go back up and see a little bit higher. Can you take? Can you make the picture smaller? Thank you. Okay. Good. No, make the picture. Thank. Okay. Good. Um. So in the car, the fat man has more. Okay. I need to go down a little bit, please. So the boy couldn't escape the car. That's confusing me. Okay. So um, after the boy, after the brother is, don't let's not say bro, let's boy. That's confusing uh, in this situation. Uh, the brother ran back. The okay. The boy ran back to his little brother safely. But soon. The fat man woke up and was crazy with anger. He couldn't see the little boys, but they could see him. The fat man took the gun. and killed himself. The boys were shocked. But the little boy was more than shocked. He ran back home almost like a zombie. Dot, 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 he was lost in his own world. Now, let me go back and read uh, what we just uh, went through. This is the first uh, week, basically, our assignment. Santa, can you take me back to the top? And I'm going to read through this so that everybody uh, can really visualize this again. Here we go. Uh, the first scene starts with a boy who's about 11, and he teaches his younger brother how to smoke. We'll fix the grammar later. You can feel there's so much respect between the two. The older brother is more like a father figure to his younger brother. He's more of a young man than a little boy. So we can visualize and feel the situation. Smoking is bad, but these little kids, whoa, these little, go back. Smoking is bad, but these little kids do it. And we can all identify with what's happening to these kids. Um, their secret adventure is exciting for them. No, 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 I'm, no, that's okay, Santa. I'm reading Valerie's stuff. Their secret adventure is exciting for them, and we can feel it, too. The listeners can feel it, too. Then Eva steps in. A black car, which usually implies some rich guy, pulls up near the boys while they're smoking. A fat man gets out and takes a garden hose, puts one end into the exhaust, and puts the other end in the car. He gets back in the car, and the car is still running. The older boy realizes that the fat man is trying to commit suicide. So he crawls out between the weeds and pulls the hose out from the tailpipe and then crawls back. His little brother is super scared. 
the fat guy suspects the hose has fallen from the tailpipe. He goes out to check, sees the hose, swears, and puts it back. The older brother again crawled out and removed the hose. The fat guy again replaced it. The older brother, one more time, against his little brother's wishes, crawled out again. But this time, the fat guy caught him and dragged him into the car after reattaching the hose. In the car, the fat man tells the boy, we're going to die together. The fat man had a gun and was scaring the boy with it. But the boy tried to remain calm. He watched many TV shows that taught you should talk to somebody who wants to kill themselves so they change their mind. So he kept talking. Meanwhile, the little brother somehow managed to crawl out and pull out the hose. Back in the car, the fat man was drinking whiskey. Eventually, he fell asleep. At that point, the older brother snuck out. The boy ran back to his little brother safely, but soon the fat man woke up and he was crazy with anger. He couldn't see the little boys, but they could see him. The fat man took the gun and killed himself. The boys were shocked, but the little boy was more than shocked. He ran back home almost like a zombie. He was lost in his own world. Santa says a bedtime story. I don't know about that. <laughs> this is pretty scary. I listened to this a couple nights ago before I went to bed, and I had to stop listening because I was not falling asleep. It was very exciting, very exciting. Uh, tragic, terrible. You guys did really good. Now, I'm going to give you a very brief summary of what happens next. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Santa, are you ready? Eventually, they have to take the little brother. To a hospital. Actually, I'm sorry, before that, I was sentenced before. Um, the older brother calls the police and tells them about the suicide. His little brother isn't getting better and eventually they have to take the little brother to a hospital. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot something really, 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 really important. Let, let me go back to Valerie. Valerie, um, when they were in the car, what did the fat man talk about? How can oh. I forget this section? <laughs> go ahead at the end, Santa. At the end, no, just, no, no, at the end, before my stuff. There you go. Before my stuff. There you go. So while they were oh. in the car. Yeah, the, the fat man explained to the boy why, why he was, uh, he wanted to kill himself. Exactly. Because he knew something that nobody knew. And uh, I think he felt relieved to have someone to tell about it. Great, great, great. So mm -hmm. Santa, you can put this even before the coat chain part there. Um, yeah, get, just get rid of all that. Um, so we'll put Valerie and I have the power. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> um, so let's put Valerie and I'm going to reword what she said. Uh, while yeah, get rid of all that, please. While in the car. The fat man told the older brother why 
he wanted to kill himself. We, the listener, can assume the fat man felt relieved to be able to talk about his trouble. So, Valerie, why did he want to kill himself? He wanted to kill himself because he knew that his life was in danger. Great. Because a very bad guy uh, wanted to to kill himself if he, if he was a bit too talkative. Great. So, mm -hmm. um, let's add this, Santa. Continuing with Valerie, yeah. Um, he, he wanted to kill himself because he knew something very important. He was a lawyer, and his client killed a U.S. senator. And he knew where the body was. But that information was so important that he was sure his client would kill him. would kill him. Not would him, would kill him, Santa. So, before his client could kill him, he wanted to kill himself. There you go, there you go. So, Santa, I want you to highlight um, he was a lawyer and his client killed a US senator and he knew where the body was. This, of course, is the key information for the rest of the book. The little boy knows where the body is. That's the key information. Um, and that's where the, the book continues at that point. Uh, so thank you very much for, I can't believe I forgot that section. How can I forget that section? <laughs> so, okay, Santa, what are you typing there? Go ahead, Santa. Knows, this means the little boy knows where the body is too. That's right. And what does that mean? So what does that mean? So now the little boy knows where the body is. So what, anybody? So the little boy knows where the body is. So what? Aha. The boy has to die. Who's going to kill the boy? Don't give me names. The, hey, no, no, no. The client. Yes, the client. What's the name of the book? The client. The client. Yes, that's right. That's right. So we have many clients here. The little boy has a lawyer. He's a client. Uh, the blade, the mafia guy, the killer, he's a client. Uh, so we got it gets a little bit confusing, but it's very exciting at the same time. Now, the next situation, Santa, don't type this down. Just everybody listen. Everybody knows, I'm sure. The next situation, they're at the hospital. The little boy finds a lawyer somehow. Amazingly, he finds a lawyer. Everybody's interested <clears throat> interested in the story. But the little boy is scared. I'm sorry, the, the older brother. The older brother is scared. He doesn't want to tell anybody what he talked about with the dead guy. It's very scary. And everybody wants to know the information. The police are asking you. Asking the, the older brother, what did the dead man tell you? The FBI, what did the dead man tell you? The newspaper reporter, what did the dead man tell you? The doctor, 
What did the dead man tell you? Everybody wants to know what the dead man told him. And he's scared. So he was smart enough to find a lawyer. And she says, don't tell anybody anything without talking to me first. So she is going to protect him, his mom, and his little brother. This lawyer is going to be his protection. Well, before long, the bad guy discovers the little boy, and the bad guy sends another bad guy to threaten the little boy with a knife in the elevator. Very scary situation. But the little boy, I'm sorry, the older brother, he's tough. He's still tough. And, uh, and that's basically where we're at. Uh, I just went through a whole hour and a half in about two minutes. Um, can anybody add anything to what uh, what I just described? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mahmoud. I think we must know how uh, police catch the boy. Okay, great. So how did the police get the boy? Uh, after he after he called the police, he came back to or, or returned to the. The scene. Wood or what this case? The scene, yes. And uh, someone catch him. <laughs> that's Only right. That. That's right. <laughs> that was scary, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. The police were. The boy was smart, told, but the police were much. Yeah, smart. because he called nine one one, and they uh, recognized his voice. They recognized it as a little boy, right? Yeah, recognize his voice, and and they searched about his name and everything. They knew everything about him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the one thing they didn't know is what the dead man told him in the car. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm curious. Do you guys think the little boy? will tell where the senator's body is or will he will he keep it a secret what do you think uh, he will keep it a secret until the end of the story all the way to the end you think so Do you know so, or do you think so? I can't remember, so don't tell me anything I don't want to know. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> if you're guessing, that's okay. If you're guessing, that's okay. But if you know, don't say anything. <laughs> Alexander says he's going to sell the secrets. Now, see, Alex, you're a smart man. If this was reality in America, Hollywood, you're right. He would sell the secret for millions of dollars and then be a rich boy and retire in, uh, I don't know, retire in Hawaii or something. <laughs> Alexander's a businessman. More comments about the story. Keep Go ahead. Anything. Questions, comments, quotes, quotes that you liked. Anything. I want to know uh, if really uh, all of you get uh, scared with, uh, with this story. Because I find it uh, not very scary, not very scary. Okay, see, Valerie, Valerie and I talked about this a long time ago. When you read a story, what is your perspective? Are you so, Valerie? When you listen to this story, who are you? Uh, uh yeah, I remember this uh, this little talk we had before. I'm not into the book, so I'm just uh, willing to know what will happen next. But I know that for you it's different. Oh, it, it very much, very much. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so it sounds like Valerie and Marwa are simply listening. You're listening to the story, correct? Yeah, just listening, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I agree. In that situation, probably not too scary. However, Marwa, what, what happens with me when I uh, – I don't know why I do this, but I've always done this. When I read books or listen to books, 
I become the main character. <laughs> I have a huge ego. Uh, so when I read Harry Potter, I was Harry Potter. Uh, when I read this book, I'm the older brother. And I don't know why I do it, but it allows me to really feel the excitement uh, or the, the, the story. So, so it's, it's, it's almost tangible and visceral when I read or listen to books like this. It becomes tangible slash visceral. I can physically feel everything. I can smell the things. I can taste the things. I can hear the things, um, and uh, which makes it very enjoyable for me. It's, I mean, I'm not saying the way you listen to a book is any different, but uh, but I do have a, a a habit of becoming the main character. So that's why for me, I'm thinking as an 11 year old boy, scary. Go ahead, Marwa. Okay, um, I think that's cool, okay, that you can live in this story, but uh, maybe because my world is more scary, I don't think there is any problem, because the, 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 the little boy, I think that he's lucky, he, ha he got a very clever lo lawyer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's very lucky, he, 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 get, he got it by, the, by, by his luck. Absolutely. He just you know, oh, and she uh, she just take one dollar and do everything for him and his mother and his his little brother. That's yeah, like you said, that's pure luck. Yeah. I'm I'm curious. I want to ask Mahmoud. Mahmoud, I know that uh, you you write. So Mahmoud, when you listen to a book like this, or when you read a book. Um, do you become a character in the story, or are you outside listening to the story? Yeah, I I be the character of the story. Yes. Okay, so you and I are similar. Uh, we actually become a character, right? Yeah, because you must feel the story and imagine you inside the story. And this happened in the life. So I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lockwood uh, and I once again, uh, we totally uh, agree there. Oh, Santa, really? Are you really Reggie Love? Really? That's <laughs> how I wish. <laughs> um, Eva and Alex had something to say too. Oh, hold up. Let's have Eva. Let's go, Eva. Alex and then Marwa. Eva, go ahead. Um, thank you. So um, when I am listening or reading, um, I, I stop for a while and I, I usually think about circumstances yeah. around that. And now, for example, I was thinking a lot about um, how um, ad adult, the older boy behaved mm. and um, according to the situation in which um, he occurred and um, I thought about it that um, you know because he was really poor he was from poor family right and um, he was the oldest man in the family because yeah. of father who uh, was really cruel to him, to his mother, and he felt himself as protector of the family. That's right, the man of the um, family. Yes, and uh, this was very important, and that's why he realizes so many um, um, possibilities which can come through if he does something um, and uh, now he was in that end in some way. Yeah. Yes, and uh, he um, he was really strong. He, um, 
he did like a really strong person because I'm not sure uh, everybody, every uh, adult person could uh, do what he did. That's right. I think uh, it's also important. Everything you said is exactly true. Uh, and we also have to remember um, his father uh, has been the TV um, and he watches a lot of police and crime stories with these powerful, uh, very moral uh, men on TV. Uh, and he gets a lot of uh, knowledge or inspiration or strength, I think, from that, too. What you said is absolutely correct. Great points. Um, Santa, yeah. So, so TV is good. No, no, no. Uh, so Eva is basically saying, just to make it really short, um, he really was the man of the family, despite his age. And um, in many ways, he was more mature than the adults. Um, and that's really uh, being brief on what Eva said, but that's basically it. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. The older brother, that's right. Uh, Alex, go ahead. Uh, I'm not quite quite understand uh, why he didn't uh, say the truth where the body of center is. Because if, uh, for example, he said it uh, out loud, uh, to press, for example, uh, a lot of people would know that, and what's a threat uh, for him? Yeah, I think um, your question's fair. So once again, the question is, why not just tell the press, then everybody knows, then he would be okay? Um, and I think that's a fair question. Uh, however, I think for most people in that type of situation, the world is much smaller and the idea of me or my brother or my mom getting hurt is so scary and so powerful and seeing the death of one man is so shocking, I think, uh, he was just scared and didn't know what to do. Um, and I think as time goes by, he gets more and more scared. And because he's so scared, he just doesn't want to say anything. You know, it's, it's child psychology, but I think for adults too, look at it this way. This is a horrible example. Please excuse me. But you can think of a, a woman who is abused by her husband. Why doesn't she just go? Why doesn't she just say something? Um, and they don't. We don't know why. Many times they just don't say anything. We don't know why. Because she loves him. Whatever. What does that mean? Come on. Come on. But, you know, the logical, I think what you're saying is logically correct, but uh, reality unfortunately, doesn't follow the logic. Marwa, you wanted to say something. That, that's just my opinion, Alex. Um, I, I do agree with you. Uh, that would probably solve the problem. But uh, Marwa, go ahead. Yeah, good points, maybe. <laughs> Uh, I want to say um, I, I am Brigitte Love also when she sued the company of the fired mother. Oh, great, great. So you were yeah. able to jump. I said, bro, crazy. <laughs> you took my rights. <laughs> I like it. There you go. So keep doing that. And I do recommend it. I do recommend uh, you guys jumping into a character. And for me, it doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl, a man or a woman, whatever. I can, I can jump into the character. But uh, do, do your best. Uh, and Marwa and Santa, they're both Reggie Love. I'll whoop their bottoms. I'll kick their asses. <laughs> That's great. Good job. I'm glad to hear that, Marwa. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, this is the deal. 
Uh, next week, we're not going to have a hangout. I apologize. I think we're going to, at this point for my schedule, I think we're going to have to go every two weeks. And I hope that's okay with you guys. You can have another hangout if you'd like. Just let me know if somebody wants to do one without me, and I'll give you access to go to meetings. So if somebody wants to have a hangout, that's great. Just let me know, and I'll give you uh, the access to go to meetings. So it can be kind of official. But with me, I'm going to start going every other week for a while. Maybe I'll keep that up. Anyway. Um, so in two weeks, I want you to have finished the story. I want it done so uh, we can finish the story, we can talk about it, and uh, we can give our opinions, we can write reviews, and that is the main challenge for two weeks later. I want you to write a book review. I do not want your book review longer than five sentences. Actually, that's not true. Longer than 10 sentences. Five to 10 sentences. A book review. That's what I want. And I prefer that it's an audio book review, but I know some of you want to read, so that's okay too. But keep it to five to 10 sentences, and uh, that should be pretty cool. Now, we also have to choose our next books. Santa, you have a list. Ah, thank you. Um, and personally, I like all of these books. Uh, there we got five of them. Santa, can you bring that Veronica one down? You see it there? There we go. There we go. Um, I love all of them. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The Suppressed History of America, Veronica Di Decides to Die, I Know This Much is True, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. However, uh, what I want to do right now yeah, everybody's uh, – yeah, uh, Mahmoud, what did you recommend? Was there something else? Ms. Veronica. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I thought it was Veronica, yeah. Um, so this is what I want to do. I want to go with um, – uh, this is a tough one. Yeah. Uh, Santa, don't confuse me. I'm sorry. D leave it out for now. Um, this – Paulo Coelho, we've had him before, so I want to put him in fifth. I know this much is true, is pretty uh, heavy book. Um, and I know Santa has read that book too. Santa, uh, no, 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 don't delete it. Um, is If we have uh, Wally Lamb, then Paulo Coelho, is that too much? Do we need a break between those books? Ah, uh, you don't know the, the Veronica book. Okay. Um, well, let me ask. Uh, Mahmoud, is Veronica Decides to Die, is that, a, is that a happy book, a sad book? Is it a heavy book? Is it What is it like? Uh, sad, sad book. Sad book. Mm. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's do this. Um... Yeah, I think I like this order, except uh, uh, I want the suppressed history of America next. So Santa, no, 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 leave, put that back. Yeah, uh, and put the suppressed history of America as the first one. And then Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Most of you probably know the story, so I want you to listen, listen to it. I Know This Much is True by Wally Lamb. It's a pretty heavy book. Uh, Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I think that's going to be a great book. That should be much lighter. And then we'll hit Paulo Coelho again. We studied Paulo Coelho about a year ago. Uh, we'll get another one of his books. So I like all five. I want to do all five. And if you don't mind, let's do this order. What do you think? What's your opinion? Eva? Oh, I wrote that I would prefer the book which was originally uh, written in English. Yeah, as far as I know, they're all, except for Mary Kondo, I don't know if that was English or not. 
Paulo Carlo. Uh, Paulo, yeah, Paulo too. Paulo can't be right. Um, however, the yeah, I'm gonna leave it in there too because it's so popular. But we'll leave it at number five for now. Maybe we'll move it in the future. Uh, it's only my uh, opinion that. Um... <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So, so we we got that at last for now. So, what do you think? First of all, the I, and this is specifically the next three books are important for Gulia. Gulia and her husband can't be here today, but uh, the uh, exchange rate is killing her. So she wants to stop her membership for uh, a few months, and this will save her some money. So she's got three credits. So yeah, this is what I want to do for the next three books, probably the next four, maybe even the next five. Is that cool? I want to say something. Sure, go ahead, Marwa. The order is great. I have no problem with it. But to be honest, uh, I recommend the book, The Life Changing Magic, and I try to hear the, the audio, and I think the audio book is not that good. Aha. The audio. The narrator. It is a computer or computed narration. I, I think that. So we have to check that. Okay, great, great. Now, the, the same thing for uh, Robert Dahl. He's British, um, and we'll verify that. So, uh, actually, I already listened. I think it's fine. Um, but Marie Kondo, I haven't listened to that one, so that's good information. I can listen right now. If you have a minute, I'll go ahead and check right now if you guys want to wait. Audible. Uh, I'm not going to check the suppressed history. That will be fine. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is the three-hour, 18-minute version. I'm just going to listen to it quickly. These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. Not a problem at all. Uh, I'm going to go with I Know This Much Is True, Wally Lamb. Listen. On the afternoon of October 12th, no problem at all. Uh, life changing, magic of tidying up. And this is a four hours, 50 minute version sample. This rebound effect is caused by ineffective methods that tackle tidying only halfway. As I've already mentioned, there is just one. Ooh, that's pretty boring. Hmm, I'm looking for maybe another version. I don't see another version. Who the hell is Emily Wu Zeller? One way to escape this negative spiral. By tidying efficiently, all at once, as quickly as possible, to make the perfect clutter-free environment. But how does this create the right mindset? It's not that bad. When you tidy your space completely, you transform the scenery. The change is so profound that you feel as if you are living in a totally different world. This deeply affects... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not decided. But I'm glad that you pointed that out. Uh, everybody, for certain, the first three are going to be good. After that, we'll make another assessment. Now, I'll tell you, the suppressed history of America should be pretty interesting. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory should be fun, should be simple, but... It's a children's story, which means lots of adjectives, which make it tough. And I know this much is true, Wally Lamb, great book, but it's going to be a little bit heavier. It's going to be a little bit heavier, but it's a great book. Uh, and then after that, we'll go light after that. That's why I thought The Life-Changing Magic might be good, but we'll see. We'll see at that point for the next three books for certain, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Great. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much, guys. Have a fantastic week. Once again, if you'd like to get together before two weeks from now, send me an email, and I'll teach you how to use GoToMeeting, and you can use my account. We'll have to set up the times to make sure everything's okay, but uh, you can do that if you'd like. Thank you, everybody. Uh, question, please. Yes. Uh, the day is changed, uh, now all Saturday, or what? <laughs> yes, I prefer to keep it uh, at this time. Is that okay? Mm, no. <laughs> I don't think you can, because you 
you have live hangouts like that's the thing well. i have so many live hangouts mahmoud that's the problem um you know i think this clashes with some of them doesn't it no this one doesn't clash uh it doesn't. oh wait a minute does it i think like if you go every other week um actually if you go by this week you're okay but I think next week you have a live hangout at 12, no? Yeah, I'm checking my schedule now. I'm, I am confused. Uh, TDM Live. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. That's right, uh, 8 and 10. So 10 would work. What about, uh, Santa, can you write this down? What about uh, 10 a.m. Chicago Saturday? For everybody. No, my problem not the time. The problem the day. The Saturday is the day. Mm. Yes. Uh, let me see. If okay, I'm... if you can't, okay, Halas. No problem. Well, I don't want to. I want to to be as friendly as possible to as many people as possible. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. Okay, Mahmoud. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. More more comments or questions. So for March 5th, um, when are we meeting? We haven't decided yet. No, this next one will will set. Uh, we'll What's set that? it at 10 a.m. Chicago Saturday. Is that right? The 10th? Oh, what? 20th? 27th? Ah, oh, man, you know, this is... Yeah, um, for now, let's set it. Yeah, my schedule is going to really be wonky, too. But for now, for now, uh, with my apologies, let us set March 5th, 10 a.m. Chicago time as our time. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Joe. Yeah, Alexander, okay. get the book. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>